joining us today, we have Bruno Showers with us. He is the Senior Policy Analyst at Arkansas Advocates for Children and Families. Um, they're an incredible organization that does really great work um, promoting um, policy that will um, benefit the lives of um, Arkansas families and Arkansas kids. Um, and Bruno is also um, a policy wonk when it comes to, to tax policy. I don't think there's anybody better that we could have um, join us today that can talk us through um, what the legislature has planned for tax policy and also, um, you know, what you can do as an individual if you um, would like to contact your legislators about whatever they're proposing. So we will jump right in. Um, Bruno, can you talk through what you expect to see come down um, the pipe with as far as tax policy is concerned? Um, is there something we need to be looking for or um, something we can expect in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having me on. I'm happy to do this. And second of all, uh, I will try my best to live up to those expectations <laughs> you set for our, our, our watchers and listeners. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think the big news, uh, we haven't seen the legislation yet, uh, but it's no secret that our new governor ran on eliminating the personal income tax. Uh, and obviously, at Advocates, we were really concerned about that for several reasons. I mean, uh, kind of going down the list, first of all, of our, our state uh, general budget, you know, is about $6 billion annually right now. About half of that is comes from our personal income tax. Uh, so as you can imagine, if we just overnight eliminated half of our state budget, we would definitely need to cut services. Uh, and it would probably be widespread cuts to like everyone would feel it, I think, if we had such a drastic reduction in revenue. Uh, the other thing is, you know, uh, if if they attempt to do this in like it, they may try and phase it in over time. Uh, so it probably wouldn't happen overnight. Uh, but the concern then becomes, uh, you know, it, we're still going to cut services eventually unless we can find a way to make up for the lost revenue. Um, and so some of the other sources they might consider, you know, probably the biggest one, our next major source of revenue in Arkansas is the sales tax. Uh but that's problematic for several reasons, too. So first of all, as you all know, the sales tax is a regressive tax, uh, you know, meaning that people with lower incomes pay a greater share of their income in that than, than people with higher income. And Arkansas already has like the third highest uh, state and local sales tax rate in the country. Like right now, a majority of Arkansans are paying more in sales taxes than they are in income taxes. So I don't, I don't think you can squeeze that. You know, there's not much more to go there. Uh, so then that becomes really, you know, what, what are we going to prioritize in our state budget? What services are we going to cut? Uh, and obviously, you know, at Advocates, we believe that we should be expanding these services when, you know, these skyrocketing housing costs, general inflation, making food, diapers, all these necessities of life, life cost more. Uh, one way we can address that is using the state budget to make investments to help people afford housing, child care, food all these things. And we're not going to be able to do that if we eliminate our personal income tax. So talk us through um, what some of these services are that could potentially be cut and how would our Kansans feel it in their, feel it most in their lives and how would it be meaningful to them to have particular services cut? Yeah, well, so I think, you know, uh, the, our biggest budget items are general education. So public schools would, would be on the chopping block. After that, it's DHS, which provides a lot of like uh, services to, you know, uh, Medicaid goes through there. So a lot of healthcare stuff um, and then institutes of higher ed. But, you know, everyone else, too. So like uh, the Department of Children and Family Services that helps uh, like foster kids, where are they going to get their money from? Uh, behavioral health services, helping people with disabilities, where are they going to get their money from? And honestly, you know, the conversation, I, I totally get the, the cuts like are important, but like think about where we are right now. So an example I would give you of like how we're already feeling the pressure just from the fact that they may cut taxes. You know, um, we have something called the disability waiver wait list, uh, people waiting for human, uh, home and community based services who have like severe uh, developmental disabilities. This wait list is over 3000 people long, and some of these people have been waiting for like literally 20 years to get services. Um, when they cut taxes last year, our previous governor and the legislature at that time committed to eliminating the wait list as it stood. Um, and they estimated that would cost like $30 million. But people are still waiting and they're still trying to get that money 
to eliminate that wait list. And, you know, it's certainly there's more that goes into it than money. We need to find providers. But but a fundamental issue is that, you know, we're so constrained that they know that there's not going to be more money there. So it's hard to recruit people, hard to get the services to people. And so that's already, to me, as an example of how, you know, the most marginalized among us are really already feeling the, the impact of this, um, the push to go towards eliminating the personal income tax, because we all know that it's such a huge source of revenue. That means that we're going to have to be very miserly with everything else. So the argument that I've heard um, for those who um, are advocating for the elimination of the state income tax is that um, Arkansans need more money in their pockets. Um, like we're struggling. Um, and I think we all, like everybody wants a few hundred extra bucks in their pocket um, to do X, Y, and Z things. So what would be the response to that, um, to that argument that eliminating the state income tax is good because it keeps money in our Kansas pockets? Well, you know, it's a super inefficient way to help people that are really struggling to make ends meet. Uh, because, you know, the last time there, uh, you may remember last session in 2021, uh, Senator uh, Trent Garner filed a bill to eliminate the personal income tax. And we kind of analyzed what that would mean, uh, who would benefit from that. And like 75% of the benefits go to the top 20% of Arkansans, people making more than $100,000 a year. Um, and in Arkansas, that's pretty well off. Uh, at the same time, um, people towards the bottom of our income spectrum are less likely to pay the income tax just because their income is so low. Um, and, you know, going back to what I said about sales taxes, think, of, think about it. In sales taxes are levied at the point of like sales. So if your prices are high, that means sales taxes are higher too, right? So it doesn't actually make sense to try and address inflation through the income tax. If you want to help people like at the at the checkout counter or whatever, there's a much more direct way to do that, which is by, you know, cutting sales taxes. Anything that you are um, besides the elimination or the chipping away of the state income tax. Is there anything else that that folks need to be paying attention to or be aware of that's happening as far as tax policy goes? Yeah. So, I mean, I think another thing that I'm watching, uh, there's been uh, at least a few fairly major uh, the tax bills that would cut corporate income taxes. Uh, and to be fair, corporate income taxes make up a much smaller share of our state revenue than our personal income tax. Uh, but first of all, it's like one of it, it's a progressive tax. I mean, the corporate income tax is mostly borne by corporate shareholders. So like much more wealthy on average than like the, the average Arkansan. Um, and then kind of, you know, if you're really going to try and eliminate the personal income tax, you need to be holding on to these sources of revenue. Um, and in particular, you know, I, I contrast it with these refundable tax credits for families because, you know, um, I don't know how in the weeds you want to go about these bills. I mean, the two I'm most concerned about are HB 1044 and HB 1045. Um, what they would do, neither one of them is a rate cut. One of them would uh, allow for something called bonus depreciation. Um, so like a quick rundown of how corporate income taxes work, especially for multi-state corporations. Um, basically, what we do is we, we take, in Arkansas, this is how we do this, we we divide up the sales that company has, you know, in every state. And then we figure out what share of those sales are in Arkansas. And then we levy taxes on them at that rate based on that. So, you know, if 1% if of their sales are in Arkansas, we're taxing 1% of their profits at the corporate income tax rate. The thing with bonus depreciation is it goes above the line in that calculation. So essentially what bonus depreciation would do for a multi-state corporation is if you make an investment in California or Texas or in another state, you get a tax cut in Arkansas because we allow you to write off an additional, like a more of that uh, investment in the first year. And so it doesn't really make sense for us to be using scarce public revenue, ultimately to subsidize investments in other states. That's kind of my view. Whereas, you know, with like a refundable tax credit to a mom in Arkansas, you know exactly who that's helping. Uh, when you look when you look at this, you have no idea where bonus depreciation is really going, but it's still cutting corporate income taxes, which are borne by wealthy people. Um, 
In addition to like our general issues with corporate income tax cuts, there's actually a couple of other reasons. I think you can oppose the, the repeal of the throwback rule, even if you like corporate income tax cuts for a couple of reasons. So first of all, it's not a broadly shared tax cut for all corporations in Arkansas. It vastly benefits manufacturers, but even then there's like some manufacturers that benefit a lot, some manufacturers that benefit a little, and then the vast majority of businesses in Arkansas probably don't benefit at all. So essentially the legislature in repealing the throwback rule would be saying you, you corporations deserve a tax cut and you corporations don't. So I think that's like a fairness issue. Um, and I tried to make that as simple as possible. I'm happy to elaborate. I, I know I went fast through a lot of concepts there. No, that's good. And that's why we have you. Um, because I think, you know, I, I don't want to speak for everyone, but for a lot of us, when we try to do, look at these bills that have been filed, our eyes kind of glaze over. Um, so we're grateful to the interpreters like you. Anything else you want to talk about or mention? Um themes that you're seeing or, you know, something that stands out overall, some like a big zoomed out picture you want folks to take away? Well, you know, um, I guess I picking up on what you said, like, I, I'm no different than you. Uh, I, my eyes blaze over when I look at this stuff too. I, it's just my job to try and figure it out. So for instance, like to, I had to call in help to understand these things. And I was apologetic, you know, to the person that I, I like super smart, walking me through different IRS like code and stuff. And I was getting lost myself. And I was like, I'm super sorry, man. Like, I feel like felt like I was wasting his time. And he was like, you know, anytime you're talking about like the IRS code or a state tax code, you're having a complicated conversation. Uh, don't feel bad about that. Like no one's bored in this world knowing everything that they need to know about it. Um, and I guess a, a theme I see or an issue I see in our tax and budget discussions is that that discomfort in itself means that the sort of people that are comfortable to like talk about tax and budget issues are not really representative of like mm -hmm. the average Arkansan. It's like the business community and business interests and high income earners or like people who own a lot of property. Um, those are the people that are dealing with like tax and budget stuff in their daily lives. And so they're the ones that show up and talk, talk about it and, and lobby legislators and um, I think it skews the conversation away from what would really help the average Arkansan. Um, so I like, you know, one thing I think, uh, like kind of on a meta level we could do is just pay more attention to the revenue tax, you know, show up, call your legislator. Don't, don't let the lack of knowledge intimidate you because frankly, none of them are omniscient either. You know, there's plenty of things in the tax and budget area that they're ignorant of just like you are. Um, so don't don't feel like you're less than or feel like you're on the back foot or something like you're just as deserving of being there and your input matters just as much as, as like, yes. you know, a, a major business <laughs> owner or whatever. That is fantastic. I feel rejuvenated. <laughs> like, OK, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to read all of the tax bills. Um, no, that's really great. I that's a really, really great observation that those in the room are the ones who have expertise in this and who've kind of driven these conversations on these tax policy for so long and probably have, you know, a lot to gain from it being in their favor. Um, and so it becomes, you know, really um, unbalanced as far as, you know, who has a seat at the table. And so we do need to pay attention and be involved um, and take ownership of that because to your point, we deserve a seat at the table too. So Absolutely. I think that's great. Um, I think that's a great place to end um, and we appreciate you and we will no longer keep you hostage. You can get to um, other things that you have to do today, like, you know, saving Arkansas children and families and all of that good stuff. Oh, well, um, it's a pleasure. Th like, thanks again for having me on. I love to talk about tax policy. I do it every week if you wanted me to.